Hello and welcome to Reporters. In this edition, we go to Andorra, a microstate nestled between France and Spain in the heart of the Pyrenees Mountains. Now, you might associate Andorra with winter sports or shopping trips to buy cheap alcohol and cigarettes. But in our report, you'll see another side to the country, usually overlooked by foreign visitors. Well, Sarah Morris has worked on that report, and she joins us from Spain, where she's a correspondent. Sarah, it might look like a, an ultra-modern uh, country, the way it embra embraces uh, unbridled consumerism, but its institutions actually date back to the Middle Ages. That's right, Charles. And you'll see in our report uh, that there are uh, complaints from human rights campaigners that that feudal contract on which Andorra's co-principality is based, that that is uh, impinging uh, developments democratically. And particularly, uh, we talk about uh, women's rights, about the right to an abortion. And they really point the finger of blame on the continued influence today of the Bishop of Orgel. Well, uh, let's uh, take a, a look at that report. It's by Sarah Morris, Laurent Cambeau, and Léa Cabosch. In Andorra, Vanessa Mendoza Cortez has become a household name. The 41-year-old risks being jailed for having complained to the United Nations about the ban on abortion in the Principality. They invited us to speak about women's rights in Andorra. Buenas tardes. Um, Good afternoon. My country, Andorra, is a feudal state with the consent of all. It is difficult and shameful for me as an Andorran, a woman and a feminist, to have to fight for basic rights such as the right to abortion. Due to that speech, Vanessa is being prosecuted for defamation and for an attack on the nation. I risk four years in prison. I might not go to jail, but I also risk having to pay a fine of 5,000 euros. What's unacceptable is that they're saying to half the population that we can't obtain our rights just because one man believes in a dogma. And if we did obtain our rights, he could face abdication. From the moment where we're governed by a churchman, it's not a democracy, it's a theocracy. Andorra is an anachronism today. It's been run by two co-princes since the Middle Ages, the President of the French Republic and the Bishop of Urgel in the Spanish region of Catalonia. He's the guarantor of Andorra's institutions and has considerable influence. But he never gives media interviews. I'd like to welcome everyone. We can only build a future for Andorra through peace, stability and economic growth, and by conserving our spiritual and cultural values. Those values include the right to life. The bishop imposes an absolute ban on abortion. Vanessa's association helps hundreds of women but none of them can publicly share their experience for fear of prosecution. This woman agrees to speak anonymously to us. As long as you don't come up against the problem, Andorra doesn't seem a bad place. It's even better if you grow up in this cocoon. Then it's not that bad. But if you need to do certain things, you start to say to yourself, I'm in Europe. I've got European rights. I can access infrastructure in neighboring countries. So why is that such an obstacle for me? In Andorra, there are about 70 doctors. None of them can legally carry out abortions. Eric Silvestre Dolsa is one of the few doctors who openly supports abortion. Since 2017, I've had a poster in my waiting room in favor of the right to have an abortion. 
It's not just a symbolic gesture, it allowed the patient-doctor relationship to be a frank one. Speaking frankly about abortion is one thing, but it remains a crime for any doctor to carry out terminations. It's punished with a jail sentence of three months to three years and a ban from working as a health professional for up to five years. The law allows for no exceptions, even in cases of rape or when the mother or fetus's life is in danger. Even if the fetus is malformed and not viable, we have to go on with the pregnancy, in theory at least until the fetus is dead. Two years ago, the Andorran government set up several welcome centres like this one, receiving a visit from the social affairs minister. It's in this room. The women come here, speak about their problems, their worries, their doubts. We're here to answer them. Sessions that always finish the same way, with the suggestion the women get an abortion abroad. Are these centres hypocritical? I don't think there's any hypocrisy about it. This is our constitution, our criminal code. It's quite clear. No one is hiding that. You've come to interview us here in a centre, where we can inform women of all the options they have. They can come here totally safely, with complete freedom. But we don't finance abortions. That would be a contradiction under the law. Most Andorran women in need of an abortion head to Barcelona, a three-hour drive away. Their a termination costs between 300 and 2,000 euros. At the heart of the Pyrenees, Andorra's 80,000 residents have had the same institutions for the last 700 years. Some argue they're in need of reform. This needs to become a civilised country. We've got a Catholic co-prince and that makes everything very complicated. But it is archaic. Everything depends on institutions which are run in a traditional way, and that has given the country stability. Culturally, we're a very traditional population and very inward-looking, very Catholic. Ninety percent of the population is Catholic. The high point for the faithful is Sunday Mass at Notre Dame Basilica of Merichel, Andorra's patron saint. Let us all stand up and pay tribute to God. Ramon Rossell has headed this parish for the last 55 years. Since Charlemagne, Andorra has been run by the Bishop of Urgell. Andorra is very rural. It's always celebrated the traditions of Saint Anthony, Saint Sebastian, St. Vincent and so on. So we are very, very Christian. Those Christian traditions are upheld by the Parliament, set up in 1419. Josep Pintat is a Conservative deputy. He's also a member of one of the ten most influential families in the country. We're going to attend a parliamentary session where the government is being held to account. Josep Pintat's father and cousin were both prime ministers. There are just 28 deputies in Andorra. Many of them come from families that have long been in politics or business. Is the concentration of economic, political and financial power here in a few hands a problem? I'd turn the question around. What should one do? Offer up our shares? Those who want to do so can buy and invest. Everyone can prosper here. You shouldn't stress the concentration of power. Everyone has moved forward together, hand in hand. It's a political system that has allowed us all to survive. This closed system, for a long time very opaque, has attracted many foreign investors. Five Andorran banks share the market. About 100 management companies manage the business. Where is the residence permit? 
Check to see if the company is registered, because the gentleman is arriving next week and we're going to manage that. Manuel Flinch runs his own company, advising 300 clients. I'm in the process of managing a visa for a Japanese man and a Moroccan. Everyone's coming here now. A few years ago, no one would have imagined that. A Japanese person had never heard of Andorra. Those investors are enticed by a system that has become more transparent in recent years and ultra-attractive taxes. In 2018, we stopped being considered a tax haven. As you can see on the table, the company tax is 10%. Our neighbours have much higher taxes. And when you have a company in Andorra, the dividends are tax-free. Income tax is also very low. The maximum rate is 10%. That cut price system angers the taxman in neighbouring countries, particularly in Spain. Miguel Ángel Mayo is a Spanish tax inspector. His mission, to double-check Spaniards paying tax in Andorra, really do live here. We're in one of the most expensive neighbourhoods in Andorra. It's interesting because last year Andorra residency requests increased by 90%. Spain's wealthy are buying up villas here worth millions of euros. The latest arrivals are young YouTubers. A YouTuber earning 2 million euros will barely pay 200,000 euros here. How much would they pay in Spain? We've got a maximum tax rate of 47%, so in Spain, they'd pay nearly a million euros. A tax rate that has attracted Spain's most popular YouTuber, El Rubius, who has 40 million subscribers. Lolito Fernandez, who has 7 million followers, has also made the move to cut his tax bill. In Andorra, you pay taxes too, but they don't bleed you dry like they do in Spain. OK, there are people who say to me, you were born in Spain, you ought to pay your taxes in Spain. The recipe works perfectly for Andorra. It's a tiny country attracting Europe's biggest earners. Competing fiscally against Andorra is impossible for any of the 27 countries in the European Union. It's a very small country that can get away with a company tax rate of 10%, income tax of 10% and VAT of 4.5%. No EU country could survive on those taxes. They have to meet other expenses, infrastructure, social spending. Do the maths. We couldn't keep anything running. Andorra is both an economic and political outlier, a unique case on the European continent, a principality frozen in time. So the complete and total ban on abortions uh, in all circumstances that exists in Andorra only exists in Europe today in the Vatican and Malta. And actually last year, San Marino uh, legalized abortion. Uh, are there any instances where women have been prosecuted for abortions in Andorra? In practice, Charles, no woman has been sentenced uh, for uh, having an abortion for the last 30 years. However, that doesn't and hasn't changed the climate of fear uh, that we witnessed in Andorra because women uh, know that abortion is illegal and vulnerable women uh, still have to travel abroad and that means they have to find uh, the money to do so and they have to keep it a secret, as you saw from our uh, report, many of them do still live in fear. And they also say to us uh, and said to us during our reporting uh, that there are not enough political parties uh, pressing, pressing to change the law. Only the Socialist Party uh, says uh, that it would like to legalise abortion. Well, one of the co-princes of Andorra is actually the French president, uh, Emmanuel Macron. Isn't he interested in, in modernising Andorra in these terms? 
He actually spoke about this in 2019 during a visit to Andorra. Uh, it's worth taking a listen to how he phrased uh, his response. He was actually met uh, by protesters, uh, women's rights protesters, as he gave his speech. As a man and as a citizen, I've always defended the right of women to decide for themselves. As French president, elected by the French people, I've made equality between women and men the great cause of my mandate. And I've passed laws on this subject. But I speak to you as co-prince of Andorra, guarantor of the independence of your nation, one of the oldest democracies in Europe. Who would I be to tell your people what they should do? You who democratically elect your representatives, who vote your laws. You can hear from those uh, comments that he made in Andorra uh, that Emmanuel Macron sees himself as a guarantor of the independence of the Andorans. He really sees it uh, as up to the Andorran MPs, members of parliament, uh, to pass uh, or change the law if they see fit. Uh, that really means uh, that any pressure from outside uh, would come, for instance, from the Council of Europe. Uh, Andorra has been a member since 1994. And we have had uh, previous commissioners uh, press Andorra to at least uh, decriminalise abortion in cases where a woman's uh, life is at risk. Well, Sarah Morris, thank you very much for your work on this report from Andorra. If you're interested in seeing more long-form reporting and documentaries, please go to our uh, France 24 website, france24.com, and do stay tuned for more programming right here on France 24.